Hi, I'm Dave Cook and welcome to Science Rocks. You know, since the outbreak of COVID-19, all of our lives have changed for our teachers, our parents, our students, and we've launched a new video series, a virtual field trip here at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. It's called Life Science at a Social Distance. It features two of our environmental teachers and it shows you some of the fun science that's here at the park, but also stuff you can find in your own backyard. Check it out. Hi, I'm Martine LaDuke. Hi, I'm Ginger Rem. And we're at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve to bring you Life Science at a, at a social, social Distance. distance. Hi, I'm Ginger and we're at Boyd Hill and I'm here to talk to you about alligators and uh, you can see a couple of them here. There's a mama gator here and then a couple of little babies that you'll see some footage of. Uh, they're very common. They're one of our state symbols and that's a reason because we do have them everywhere here in Florida. Anywhere there's fresh water, you will be more than likely to find alligators. Uh, that's lakes, ponds, canals, swamps, different ecosystems around in the area. As you can see, the little baby gators, they have stripes that help them camouflage in the environment. Uh, they use their tail, of course, to swim, make some excellent swimmers. They do camouflage from their predators, which could be other alligators. It can be birds, hawks, eagles, things like that that would be more than happy to have them as a little snack. Uh, Mom is very protective of them. She likes to stay very close. She likes to keep them close and calls them back. Um, but definitely you want to keep clear if you see a mama gator with a nest of little babies. So on the other side of the little creek here, you can see where mama alligator would make a nest. And these little babies, they're, one of them looks like probably a year old, one maybe a little bit younger. They grow about a foot each year that they're alive and until they're about four. After four, they, you know, they don't have to necessarily grow a foot a year. But um, it's neat to see them out here. Again, they're just kind of camouflaging. They're looking for food. They will eat little fish. They'll eat small birds, um, little things that they can find. You can see that we're looking at a little pod of baby alligators over here. They are close to mom, as you can see on the other side of the shore from earlier. Uh, they do stay close for up to three years. All right, the yellow stripes help them camouflage into their environment, and as they mature, those stripes will start to fade and just turn into that kind of darkish gray, just like the adults, and that helps them kind of camouflage in their environment as an adult and being a top predator. In this pod, we have a variety of ages, maybe one to three years old. You can tell again by their size, they grow about a foot a year, up to about three or four years, and they, um, their growth slows down a little bit. Springtime is mating season, and you'll hear them bellowing. That's how they get uh, noticed where they are, and you'll hear them, the males will make their bellowing sound, they'll do kind of a water dance, and then the females will re respond back. Uh, during this season, you'll see them kind of anywhere out in the neighborhood, so always be on guard, on the lookout. Ranger Amy was able to get video of uh, an alligator bellowing the other day. Thank you for joining us and learning about alligators. Remember to look for them when you're out at your parks. Remember to keep your distance and don't feed them. We'll see you next time. Today we're going to look at some of our native vegetation in Florida. This is our Florida State tree, the sable palm. You'll hear some people call it the cabbage palm. And I think it's a pretty good state symbol because the Native Americans called this the tree of life. They used so many different parts of this tree for shelter, tools, food. Um, our migrating birds eat a lot of those little black berries that have the seeds and help to disperse the seeds. Um, the Native Americans would use the palm frond um, for roof, for their roof of their chickie or their hut. Uh, they would use little strings that you can pull off of the palm frond. I have some here and they could braid it and widen it together and make fishing line or rope from that. Even today some people eat a part of the tree called the heart of palm. Of course you have to kill the tree to get the heart of palm but it's about the top three or four feet if you would cut the trunk Right through the center is a really tender part that you can eat and it's nice and crunchy. This is a very slow growing tree. From germination till less than a foot tall, that could take 15 years. And then it only grows about six inches a year. So I would estimate that this tree could possibly be 90 years old. There's some ways that you can identify the sable palm. This is one of the palm fronds that must have fallen off. You can see that it's a fan palm because the palm frond makes a fan shape, but the sable palms are folded in half.
kind of like the shape of a taco. You can hold it like a taco. The other way that you know that it's a sable palm is this section of the palm frond goes right through the middle and makes a sharp point going right up the middle of the palm frond. I remember the name sable palm because this kind of looks like a light saber. Saber and salt sable kind of sound the same. So the point going through the middle will tell you that it's a sable palm. If we look over here, this looks like a young sable palm tree. But if you look at the fan-shaped palm frond, you can see that it doesn't make that point going through the middle and it's not folded in half like a taco either. Another characteristic that tells me this is a saw palmetto and not the sable palm is if you look down here, there are little saw's teeth going up right here. And that's where the saw palmetto gets its name. Another characteristic that helps you to identify the sable palm are these. These are called boot jacks. This is where the palm frond breaks off and falls to the ground. And most sable palm trees will hold on to their boot jacks, but sometimes they naturally fall off. So legend has it that the cowboys, when they would camp at night, they'd get ready for bed, they'd take off their boots and they'd hang them up here so that the snakes and other critters wouldn't get in during the night. So they say that's why they call these boot jacks. This is also a very resilient tree. It can survive floods, it can survive cold, it can survive heat, it can even survive fire. We do controlled burns here at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve and you might notice that some of the trunks of the sable palm tree are black. The boot jacks have burnt off, but the trees are still able to survive. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the state sable palm tree, our state tree. You can see these trees everywhere, so maybe if you get the opportunity to walk around your neighborhood, you can look for those. Or you can come to Boyd Hill. Thanks for watching. This is Martine LaDuke at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. See you next time. All right, so this is a Florida softshell turtle that we do find here in the lakes and ponds and canals here in Florida. And she's come out to lay her eggs. And uh, you can see some special adaptations that she has with the pointed snout. She does have flippers. They do have nails because they do climb in and out of the water, so they do have that for support. Uh, so these are adaptations that they have specifically for living in the water. Uh, they have a very long neck that can extend, so their body can stay submerged and just their neck and head come out where they're able to breathe the oxygen. Uh, this is not a tortoise, even though it's on land. It is a turtle. It has webbed feet for swimming. It has that nice soft shell um, for easily uh, moving around. They do come out every year to lay eggs. They come out um, probably 20, 30 yards and they will dig a hole, they will lay eggs, and then they will um, leave them. They don't actually take care of the eggs. They don't do anything with the young. They just hatch in the late summer. And then we have a new fresh batch of babies. She can come in and out of the sun. They will sit on the, the side of the um, creeks and ponds. They'll lay on logs and things that are out there. Um, but she's out here strictly for laying eggs. They don't come normally this far away from the water except just to lay eggs. So that's what she's doing. Uh, they'll eat a lot of different vegetation and things out in the water, little fish and things. So turtles have to have water. Um, there are land turtles, like Florida box turtles that we have. They are able to go into shallow water. They're not swimmers. They don't have webbed feet, but they are a turtle because they do have to have water. So here we have the Florida box turtle that Ms. Ginger mentioned, um, and we're going to compare it to the soft shell turtle. We have a display here at Boyd Hill, and we have a permit to keep the box turtles. The soft shell turtle, some people call that a pancake turtle because it's flat like a pancake. And it has a leathery or a soft carapace. That's the top part of the shell. Plastron is the bottom part of the shell. And if you look at the box turtle, it has a hard carapace with scutes or bony little plates on it instead of the leathery shell of the Florida soft shell. It is more terrestrial than the Florida soft shell because it lives on, meaning it lives on land more, but it does go into the water. You can see he can stick out his neck really far. And um, the Florida box turtle got the name because he closes up like a box. On the plastron, there's actually a hinge here. So they hide inside their shell like the other turtles do, but in addition, he can close the door kind of like a little drawbridge right there and he can close himself safe inside. If I tickle his fanny, its back end will close as well. So they close like a box. That's where they get the name box turtle. If you ever see one and you want to know if it's a male or a female, 
You just look at the plastron, the bottom part of the shell, and if it's flat, I remember flat female, FF, but if it's indented, like caved in, that's the male box turtle. You would find the Florida box turtle near water, but not really swimming through the water, although they do go in shallow water. You can see he has claws on his feet for digging under the leaf, uh, leaf litter and the pine needles, and you can see that the shell would camouflage really well under the dead leaves and dirt. They are omnivores, and you know that that means that they will eat both meat and plants. So they particularly like things like earthworms and insects, and then they will eat, also eat plants. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Florida box turtle and the softshell turtle. You can find those near the water, maybe even in your own backyard. Today we're going to talk about the zebra longwing butterfly, which is the state butterfly of Florida. And this is the host plant for that butterfly, one of its host plants. So this is the corky stem passion vine. Um, the adult butterfly would lay some small little yellow eggs on the back of the leaves and then the caterpillar will emerge from those. So I can see a couple different size caterpillars on the passion vine. This one's a little smaller than this one and there's one over here as well. So there will be five instars before it becomes the adult butterfly. The zebra longwing is the most interesting butterfly that I have researched. They lay a couple of yellow eggs and then when the caterpillar emerges, it is a white caterpillar with black spots and black spikes. And it looks like it would hurt you, but it doesn't. They will go from the egg to the caterpillar or the larva, then to the pupa, they will create their pupa and it looks just like a dead leaf. And the adult butterflies are so intelligent. They go to their host plants and they, if I were to take the plant away, they would go back to that same spot the next day trying to look for that plant. They um, eat nectar from the flowers, just like the other butterflies that, we've, um, that we're all familiar with. But that's kind of just like sugar water. There's not a lot of nutrition in that. They also eat pollen, and most butterflies don't do that. And pollen is like a protein. So do you know that most butterflies only live for two or three weeks? The zebra longwing is able to live for three months or even longer because it also eats the pollen, the protein from the flowers. And then at night, they roost. So what happens is the oldest, one of the older zebra longwing butterflies will find a nice place to hang upside down. And other zebra longwings will come and gather all around it, and that's what they call roosting. There can be up to 60 butterflies in one roost, and they hang there overnight and they sleep, and it helps to keep them keep warm. And in the morning, just like a family that might be sharing a bed, they start to nudge one another to wake each other up and to get each other moving, and then they fly off for the day and they come back to the same roost at night. I hope you've enjoyed our segment on the Florida State Symbols. I bet you can guess what our Florida State beverage is. See you next time at Life Science at a Social, Social Distance. distance.